Top five hidden messages in the Truman Show. Number one. Let's go all the way to the credits for this one to find out that it's co-produced by Richard Luke Rothschild. The Truman Show is a movie made by the Rothschilds family. Number two. The Masonic Beehive. In the opening scene, Truman is looking into the mirror, and in the bathroom you can see there is a beehive. Now this specific beehive is the same exact style that the Freemasons have on all of their symbolism. In fact, it's such an important symbol that Brother George Washington's Masonic apron had the beehive symbol at the very top of it. And the meaning of the beehive fits perfectly for Truman as we see it in the Masonic Encyclopedia here, the bee was among the Egyptians, the symbol of an obedient people. And so Freemasonry uses the beehive to symbolize the obedient people. That is the non-Masons who are obedient to the governments that are run by Freemasons. Number three, either the earth or moon is classified. About halfway through the movie, it shows the dome style earth the guy picks up a pepperoni pizza slice and the newspaper says classified. Now typically it would say classifieds, however in this case the S is omitted and that means that it is not a classified section, it means that the information that they're displaying is classified. There's two significant things that are shown here. Number one is they are in the moon, this is the HQ inside of the moon, and the second one is that the camera has just panned from the dome style earth. So either something about the earth or the moon is classified. And that leads right into number four, flat earth references. The Truman Show is littered with flat earth references, starting from the very beginning opening scene, which wasn't in the movie, but we can find it in the script. It says, personally, I think the unconquered south face is the only one worth scaling. Of course, it's a 20,000 foot sheer wall of ice, but when did that ever stop me before? So we have unconquered, humans haven't conquered it yet, it's in the south, and it's a 20,000 foot high sheer wall of ice. Personally, I think the unconquered south face is the only one worth scaling. It's a 20,000 foot sheer wall of ice, but that's never stopped me before. The stars are fake or artificial, and there's actually a rip in the dome. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky, and it's also called Dog Star. But when this star fell in an old trailer, it showed an actual rip in the dome. However, in the actual movie, that's kind of covered up with a lamppost and the rip is not showing. The Truman Show logo shows a picture of Earth, which doesn't make a lot of sense for the Truman Show itself. You would think that it showed a picture of Truman's town. But the funny thing is, the dome that Truman lives in over there in Hollywood actually pans out and turns in to Earth right here it just changes from Truman's dome into the sphere Earth. So it seems that the Truman Show logo itself is showing that this is not a story about one town, it's a story about the Earth. There's a globe in his garden that he later uses to sneak out when he's uh, escaping from the town. Here his friend has moved that globe aside, and he says that Truman's gone. Truman's radio is a, another sphere Earth. He does have vitamin D, uh, which he needs to take because he's not getting any real sunlight. And as we've just seen, Truman's Earth is an actual flat Earth with a dome over it. And number five, Truman goes to Antarctica and finds a new world. Truman is leaving in a boat. It's called the Santa Maria. The Santa Maria here is indicative that he's going to a new world. Columbus supposedly, you know, used the Santa Maria when he went to his quote-unquote new world. 
We know that story's a bunch of nonsense. But the significance of the Santa Maria here is that Truman is going to a new world. The weather starts out fair, but quickly gets very bad, which is exactly what happens when you sail to Antarctica. In fact, one time Truman falls out of the boat and almost dies. This is like what happened with Shackleton and the very first adventurers who went down to Antarctica. It was one disaster after the next because the weather is so bad. They call it the Roaring 40s, the Furious 50s, and the Shrieking or Screaming 60s. And once you get down to 70 degrees south, uh, things start not being not so windy anymore. But the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s are what's depicted here, and Truman's going through them. There's one more very quick hint that he is heading to Antarctica, where we can see that the compass is spinning. This is something that happens when you go close to the South Pole. Your compass will just spin. So in addition to the bad weather, the compass spinning, once Truman finally escapes the storm, he runs smack into a nice wall. And we can argue that it's not ice here at Sky, but it would be the firmament then. So he's, he's either hit the firmament or he's hit the ice wall. Now the staircase here may be a reference back to the very beginning of the movie where he was talking about climbing a 20,000 foot unconquered wall of ice. So here he is come to the ice wall or come to the firmament and he has to climb up in order to get to the top of it where he finds the exit. He then exits from the realm, leaves the firmament and goes to a new world and takes a bow. It reminded me of this map where he encountered the ice wall had to follow it to the right and then found a exit out of the realm to a new land. Or perhaps it's a little bit closer to this map, which is supposedly a 10,000 year old map made by monks. And we can see that there are lands beyond the realm that we reside in. And we find the very similar ending in C.S. Lewis book, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. They are taking a boat and sailing away from Earth. There was no need to row, for the current drifted them steadily to the east. None of them slept or ate. And when the third day dawned, with a brightness you or I could not even bear, even if we had dark glasses on, they saw a wonder ahead. It was if a wall stood up between them and the sky, a greenish-gray, trembling, shimmering wall. Then up came the sun, and at first rising, they saw it through the wall and it turned into wonderful rainbow colors. Then they knew that the wall was really a long, tall wave, a wave endlessly fixed in one place, as you may often see at the edge of a waterfall, and it seemed to be about 30 feet high, but for now they saw something not only behind the wave, but behind the sun. So it seems like the sun here is an illusion. They can see stuff behind the sun, but now they looked at the rising sun and could clearly see things beyond it. What they saw eastward beyond the sun was a range of mountains so high that they never saw the top and the mountains really must have been outside of the world. For any mountain even a quarter or a twentieth of the height ought to have ice and snow on them but these were warm and green and full of forests and waterfalls however high you looked. No one in the boat doubted that we were seen beyond the end of the world into Aslan's country. My friends, we have arrived. Is this your country? No, my country lies beyond. But you should know that if you continue, there is no return. 